There are good reasons PLA is the plastic that is most often used in 3D printing. It's easy to print with, uh, it's biodegradable, kind of, it doesn't require a heated bed, and even if you are using one, you only have to get it to like 60 degrees Celsius, which even the cheapest printers from China these days can achieve. Most importantly, pure PLA is pretty much impervious to the humidity in the air, meaning you can store your rolls of filament on your shelf and use them months later to get the same flawless prints. It can also be annealed to achieve some pretty decent strength characteristics. But when it does break, it's brittle, not ductile, which is bad. But the low melting point of PLA is really its Achilles heel that guarantees your prints will deform under any heat. This is where all of the other filament types come in. ABS, PETG, polycarbonate, nylon, TPU. There are a ton of videos and websites telling you all about the characteristics of these alternative plastics. So going over them individually isn't something I'm going to do here. But as a group, these PLA alternatives are much more temperature resistant and they are all negatively affected by the moisture in the air. To some degree, they all soak up humidity and retain it in the filament. When the filament passes through the hot nozzle of your printer, the water boils. Uh, in the case of PETG, this leads to poor layer adhesion, but for the rest, it is much worse. The expanding boiling water leaves gaps in the extrusion. Uh, this manifests as poor surface finish, but also greatly affects the strength of the part. Also, the expanding gas in the melt chamber keeps pushing filament out of the nozzle even after you have retracted for a travel movement. This leads to stringing. So basically, if you are printing with any filament except PLA, the dryness of your filament is pretty much the most important factor in achieving quality prints. Enter the filament dryer. I made this one from a modified food dehydrator. It works fantastically. Um, some of you may have seen the video I made about it previously where I poo-pooed it, saying it needed to get hotter in order to work well. That was wrong. I was corrected in the comments by some savvy viewers, and it was those comments that motivated me to make this follow-up video. I made my unit here for about $60 by printing a new lid for the guts from a $30 food dehydrator and using a 10-inch concrete form tube from the Home Improvement Store. I've made this from ABS uh, filament, but making it from PLA won't work because, as we already discussed, PLA fails under any sort of heat, and this is basically an oven. If you want to print this, you will need to have the ability to print 300 millimeters cubed with a printer that has a bed which can reach 100 degrees Celsius. The only printer I have which can do this is my Tevo Little Monster. If you want to know more about this project, uh, follow the link in the doobly-doo with the timestamp so you can get right to the good stuff. Of course, if you dry your filament, you will need to store it in a sealed container. There are uh, plenty of other videos here on YouTube showing a number of ways to accomplish this, but I wanted to use the rest of my concrete form tubing uh, and make what I think is the superior solution. I'll show you more about this here in a few minutes. First, let me tell you guys about two interesting things I've learned about drying filament. If you are going to dry your PLA, do it at low temperature. At 70 degrees Celsius, I found that my PLA anneals, for lack of a better word, the filament gets more gummy and stronger. It's also way more difficult to push through the nozzle and can lead to jamming. I don't know what the chemistry behind this is, but prolonged heating of PLA changes its characteristics. This happens in the melt chamber of your printer as well. Have you ever paused a print and then tried to manually push some more filament through after a few minutes? Notice how the first few millimeters of push are really difficult and then it gets easier? So this issue leads to jamming uh, in multicolor printers, which switch filament but uh, run it through the same nozzle. It's the primary reason I gave up on my efforts to DIY a material changing printer almost two years ago. Okay, the other interesting thing is important and it is the reason that I thought filament drying at lower temperatures wasn't effective. Filament spools with solid sides don't facilitate filament drying. The tightness of the coils is important too. I couldn't get this 
tightly wound solid sided uh, spool of TPU to dry completely even after like two days in the dehydrator and I erroneously ascribed this as a failure of the dryer. We'll talk more about this in a few minutes but first let's go back in time to when I was printing this lid and talk about stringing with wet versus dry PLA. While my print is proceeding along nicely, it's been like uh, almost nine hours. And uh, hey, let's talk about some uh, test prints that I did previously. So this is actually what started me off on this whole tangent in the first place. So what you're looking at here is the original test print with some uh, wood fill PLA that had just been sitting out in the elements. And unfortunately, my toddler got a hold of this thing and broke the spire off and also stuck his finger through the gap there. And those strings used to go all the way across between the two pillars and they they bridged it nicely, looked like a spider web. And the only difference between this print and this print was the fact that I dried the filament in between the two prints. So it's the same G-code file. So this got me thinking, hey, maybe PLA really is sensitive to humidity, just like other higher temperature plastics. Um, so I did some tests. I changed some variables. And all of these are uh, PLA prints. You can see lots of wood fill. And then we have two... Uh, actually three different, there's two types of black PLA there and some yellow and some white. So uh, just lots of different PLA to test and you know like this was all um, just changes in the slicer. None of this came from uh, any changes in the humidity. So I got this, this PLA filament soaking wet and nothing happened. So only wood fill uh, of the filaments that I have, only the wood fill is susceptible to uh, temperature changes, uh, I'm sorry, humidity changes. Um, but the story is different when you look at a higher temperature plastic. These are all polycarbonate prints and this right here was um, a print done uh, with some filament that had been sitting in a sealed package with a desiccant pack but it had been sitting on my shelf for about a year, maybe longer. Um, and you can see just how terrible that surface finish is. So I tried to dry the filament. I uh, used the spool that it came on, stuck it in the, uh, the filament dryer and this was my next uh, test. And you can see these first couple of layers look okay, but then it starts to look pretty much the same. And here I also got some, uh, some pretty bad warping because the higher temperature plastic, the more it's gonna warp. So I tried drying it again, 48 hours in the filament dryer, and I got a good quarter inch, or I don't know what, four or five millimeters of nice print, and then bam, ugliness again. So something's going on here. I gotta dry it better. Well. I got it dry. Look at that. That is just a beautiful print. This going on up here, I don't know what that is, but it's not um, it's not from the um, from the filament being wet. You can see because I get a nice smooth uh, surface finish up again once I'm doing those long prints. So something with the retraction or I don't know. But um, yeah, as far as drying the filament goes, I got it figured out. And let me show you exactly what I did. So this is my polycarbonate. You can see that I put uh, scratch the PC letters right there into the into the spool but this is the original spool that it came on so look at that solid sides now that's that's the key here see the air uh, also I wound this kind of loose you can see I can just sort of so the air can circulate through the windings and also through the sides of the uh, of the spool so that got dry nice and easy it only took like three hours I mean I think I just ran it for like three or four hours and I got that beautiful print this one uh, you know after just three hours on this spool. But on the original spool, wound all tight with those, you know, the, the air can't pass through those sides. So this is a problem. You really need, uh, you know, perforated or opened sides like this to get good filament drying. So any uh, high temperature plastic really should not come on this. So that is, if you find high temperature plastic on one of these things, um, I guess it stays drier longer. Uh, so if you don't have a filament dryer, maybe this is a good thing. But if you do have a filament dryer, this is a bad thing. Now, earlier I hinted at the fact that PLA uh, being run through the filament dryer is potentially bad. And this is uh, bad PLA now. So what happened is I had that filament dryer at full temperature. Yeah, basically this filament got annealed. And I wish I had known about the annealing uh, problem before I dried that roll because uh, I'm printing this at 220 degrees, you can see 
Uh, and that's what it's taking in order to not jam the filament there in the extruder. So if I'm printing at normal PLA temperature of 200 degrees, it's just jamming. But let's jump over there on the computer and I'll show you guys exactly uh, what I'm making here. And we'll talk about the, uh, the, you know, the geometry for that filament dryer as well. On the left here, you're looking at the filament dryer and I'm not gonna go over this too much here in this video because top right of the screen, there's a link to the, uh, to the video where I actually talked about this, uh, this whole unit and how I repurposed a um, uh, food dehydrator to make this. But you can see here this light brown uh, section, that is sono tube, otherwise known as a concrete form material for making concrete pillars or maybe you know cementing a post into the ground, that kind of a thing. It's cheap. It's available at your local home goods store for like $10 for a four foot length of it. That is the 10 inch stuff. And yeah, we're gonna use it again for this dry box. So the bottom here is uh, just a concrete disc, or um, uh, a plywood disc. The There's the sauna tube, so we'll just hide that. And then um, you can see this portion here, that is the ring that has the thread. So that's gonna glue into the, uh, into the sauna tube. Now there's my lid assembly and let's just pull that out of the way for a second. So you can see the ring and that's going to get silicone glued to make a nice seal, uh, you know, also silicone gluing the, uh, the plywood there. Um, in my lid assembly, you can see the, um, this green. Now that is a TPU print and that is my seal. So it's supposed to be flexible and hollow so it will deform and squish and hopefully make a nice seal. But you know, it's not gonna be as compliant as some sort of like a foam seal, um, but it is something that I can easily print and it's unbroken so there's no seam. And if I were to buy some like foam gasket material, I would have a seam. So, mm, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit skeptical about how well that's gonna work. I might need to replace it with uh, the foam eventually because this surface that you're looking at there, that's gonna be printed down. So it's gonna be printed upside down according to what you're looking at. So that will be uh, on the glass. It'll be a nice smooth surface, but everybody knows that you can take your fingernail and scratch the, uh, you know, the surface that was printed, the, the, the top surface or the bottom surface, excuse me. Uh, and you'll, you'll feel the, you know, the, where each little row of filament got laid down, you'll feel it with your fingernail. I don't think that the TPU is gonna be compliant enough to seal all of those little cracks. Um, but we'll see, I'm gonna give it a try. And you know, it might be, it might make a good enough seal to where every two weeks or every week or so I have to change out the desiccant and that's, it's not the worst thing. Um, you know, because I, I will have desiccant down inside there. So the rest of this, we can see there is the uh, there's the lid, and then there's the handle. Um, so that's going to print as two separate pieces. The handle attaches with these um, uh, screws. These are just simple drywall screws. So that's a nice, quick, easy assembly to make. Um, but as soon as I made this, uh, I kind of had the self critique of, I don't think I'm going to like this handle sticking up. So I'm going to make a new version, uh, with a recessed handle just so that I have a nice flat top here on this lid so I can stack things on top of my filament dryer or filament dry box. Um, but yeah, I still need to draw that. So speaking of drawing, if you are interested in the process of how I made, uh, the, this geometry, go ahead and click up here on the top right. Uh, there's a two hour or hour and 45 long minute video, sort of a, well, kind of like a live video um, where I'm just narrating un unedited uh, the process of drawing this geometry and here in Rhinoceros 6.0. Here it is, the completed filament spool holding dry box. You can see the PLA printed ring there. Uh, it's never going to get above room temperature, so I don't have to worry about uh, you know, I can print with PLA. And there at the bottom we see the uh, plywood. Both of those components glued to the tube using 100% uh, silicone caulking, basically. So nice and watertight, which should mean it's airtight as well. Now the plywood I originally cut as just this sort of rough disc, which sat proud of the, uh, of the cylinder, of the tube. And once it had dried overnight and fully hardened, I came around with my router here that has a following bit on it. So that's got a, a flush cut trim cutter and I can basically just go around like that and it cuts the plywood perfectly flush with the, uh, with the sides of the cylinder. So thanks for a nice clean installation there. 
The lid that I told you guys I was gonna make, here is the flat lid with the uh, recessed handles, and it just takes a second to find, there we go. Yep, threads right on. And that allows me to stack things on top of this, such as the actual filament dryer itself. So a little bit better than this lid with the handle that sticks up. However, I do lose a little bit of space. So if I'm needing to stack one more, uh, you know, spool of filament and I need the room, I guess I have an extra lid to accomplish that. <clears throat> so yeah, pretty successful project and I'm really happy to now have the ability to dry my filament. It should lead to some really good quality prints from my higher strength and higher temperature plastics. This video was brought to you by these amazing monetary supporters of this channel. Without these guys, the channel would not be continuing, so please give them a thank you in the comments or join their ranks. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.